Uh, this is my cohort with my... We, we build a race car between us, but he gets to do the fun bit. He gets to drive it. And uh, that was a 383 we did um, with a very basic porting on. And you can see that's 590 horsepower, 520 foot-pounds, all on pump gas. Again, it was a cheap motor. We actually had a scat cast steel crank, and I think we built that engine for about seven grand in parts. Oh, and we used it to test our chassis. And we, we had this as a street motor in a, in a race class, and we were competitive with it. We were about midfield qualifier. And uh, we asked if we could run on pump gas because our motor didn't go very well on race gas. Everyone else had 14 and 15 to 1 compression engines. I think we were about two tenths slower than the guy that won it. And he had a $20,000 race engine in. So, you know, the, the ability to, to do this with in house porting, and you'll notice so far I've not even mentioned a flow bench. This is a Ford that I did. Game with Terry over there. Uh, this is a 347, uh, dark 170cc heads, and uh, the, uh, the end result was 472 foot-pounds, 562 horsepower. Is there any Ford guys here? Does that look like a pretty respectable number to you? Well, I'm going to show you the power curve on that manifold and on the uh, um, two-plane manifold. Here's the cylinder head for it. Again, nothing special. I did coat the valves on this. Calico coating coated the valves on there. Um, it's uh, Typically, if you coat the intake valve on a setup like this, it's about five horsepower because the intake valve gets hotter than you think. Um, I looked down the intake stacks on a, on a, um, a BDP, Cosworth BDP. When I was on my dyno, I wanted a good shot with the exhaust glowing. So I had to take a shot with it in the light and then turn all the lights off and take a shot with it being run so that the exhausts were glowing and then superimpose one picture on the other. So I had glowing exhausts with a dyno cell lighted. When I walked in there, when the lights were off, on the Cosworth BDP, you can see the intake valve down the intake track. I walked by and I was amazed I could see the intake valve glowing dull red. Never occurred to me up until then that the intake valve ran that hot. Well, you know where all the heat's going, right into the intake charge. So the number one deal is if you don't want to spend big bucks on coating, just coat the intake valve. It's, it's a straight five horsepower, just like five horsepower, five foot-pounds on a typical 500 horse engine. Here's the, the curves for that engine. The green curve is with the two-plane manifold on. Both instances, it was a totally streetable engine, but a guy with an automatic transmission might want to do the other one. Um, so, like I said, that was, there was no trick stuff involved in the porting on there. It was, in its basic form, it was skinny down the guide bosses, blend in the short side turn, and clean up the port. Period. That was it. Okay, I usually work on aluminum heads because they just cut so, so much faster, but it, at the bottom end of the market, Iron heads are uh, a real contender in, in terms of uh, the volumes that you can put out there. And uh, in the same way, they can be ported uh, just as effectively. It just takes a little bit longer. Now, here's a, uh, an engine that uh, I did when I was uh, teaching at UNCC. In fact, Dusty over there, I think this was your first work on a big block, wasn't it? This is a 4 you. You did all the rod lightning on it. So we did this engine here. It was a student project, and the guy that ported the cylinder heads had never picked up a die grinder and ported heads before. And that engine, it was a 280 um, solid roller Comp Extremes cam. So it was not a big cam. Uh, it was 10 to 1, 642 foot-pounds, 675 horsepower. That was really a low buck motor. I think you could re build one of those for somewhere about five grand. And, and if you compare those numbers with ver often what you see in magazines, you'll see that this is putting out more horsepower and torque than engines with as much as 70, 80 cubic inches more. Like I said, this is what I usually work on in a, a, a typical uh, um, uh, hand ported 
345. On a 505, uh, that's not the big bore, big block, but a, 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 a four and a quarter bore, um, uh, uh, 60 over. You can reasonably expect, if you get everything right on it, intake manifold, exhaust cam and that, to see 800 plus horsepower um, uh, from hand-ported heads. Here, here's what it's worth in terms of flow. You want to quickly scan those numbers, you can see that, uh, um, best to look at the bottom numbers here, that gives a good uh, indication. But the beauty, of, now, I'll, I'll tell you something about porting big block heads. Because a big block has got so many cubes under a, a cylinder head architecture that can never have a big enough valve, when you port the heads, you get a disproportionate increase in horsepower. Basically, it's such an air-hungry engine that um, a 10% increase in airflow usually results in more than 10% increase in output. Um, so it's a very um, rewarding uh, uh, type of cylinder head to port. And the beauty about it is, is that, it, yeah, sure, it does take a little bit longer, but when you, if you were to do a back-to-back -back test on the dyno, you'd find it a very satisfying result.